All right, this is my first kind of video vlog or vlog as the net geeks are calling them now. I used to be a net geek, then I started living in the real world and using the computer as a tool instead of a social crutch, which is a difficult thing to break out of, I know, but you have to do it or you run into the whole matrix thing, whatever that is. Um, okay, so my reasons for blogging or vlogging, be popular and say vlogging. Um, okay, I've been researching a lot of very interesting things in the last 10 years. Um, somebody will probably think I'm crazy, probably think I'm just a stupid American without, I don't know, a doctorate or master's or even a bachelor's degree. Apparently, in some corners of the world, you are not worth shit unless you have a piece of paper to back it up. Intelligent thoughts don't count for anything anymore, which is a pity. Um, but, going on. So I've developed some really cool ideas, possibly some technology. I will, maybe, and I maybe will not tell you if I've actually built it or not. Um, because I don't want to draw too much attention. Just by blogging this, I'm going to draw a lot of flack, probably, from the Chinese government, the American government, and, uh, let's see, anybody with, uh, oh, probably anybody British, and into the academic circle of science. Um, okay, so moving on, I'll not bitch about that. So, okay. This is going to be my first message to vloggers in general. Okay, I've read, oh, sorry, sorry, not read, I've watched a lot of your, your videos on YouTube and other places, and you're complaining and whining like little children um, about people commenting about your videos, and you're commenting back and saying, oh, you can't say that because this is my personal blog and blah, 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 bullshit, 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 bullshit. Okay. If you put it on the internet, it's public knowledge. So if you don't want to air your dirty laundry in public, don't put your, don't put your shit online. Simple as that. Okay, moving on. So my uh, reasons for vlogging are this. Okay. Uh, and research some really cool things the last 10 years. Uh, the biggest thing is going to be, remember all of that math in algebra that you thought you would never use and was never going to be used ever, um, except for on examination? Well, um, it's going to be used. It's going to be used and it's going to be really easy because I'm going to make it easy. It's like that. Um, Okay, so, uh, and that math bit is going to be about stargates and wormholes. Yes, they are real. Our government probably has wormhole devices, wormhole technology. If I can figure it out, I'm sure there's somebody that figured it out about, I don't know, 50 years ago or so. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, thought-activated technology. Uh, there's a lot of buzz about that on the internet right now. Um, there's a company called uh, Interchange Labs. They have a department of, department of defense contract, I guess. Um, I don't know for sure, but I heard that. Um, so if the military is interested in their mind interfacing technology, it's probably kick ass. Um, Okay, but uh, along the, the same time that I found their website, I was discovering the same technology myself. It's pretty much based on um, quantum psychokinesis or quantum um, tunneling, blah, 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 blah. Uh, layman's terms, it's um, micro psychokinesis. Everybody can do it if you have a brain. Uh, reasonably, if you have a reasonably um, sane, stable psychological state, you can train yourself to do it. Um, unless you're 
retarded or something, and then if you tie your shoes, you're having a good day. Um, okay, so the other thing is, um, uh, what kind of started me into advanced technology is a movie, of course. Um, lightsabers, uh, that was my biggest research project. Um, I'm coming online now, ten years, uh, about eight years later, and saying, yeah, they exist. You don't need a nuclear reactor to power them. Um, and you can pretty much buy everything off the shelf that you need to build one, uh, if you're smart enough to use a soldering iron. Um, okay, so I'm also going to be doing some high voltage stuff, showing you how high voltage makes things explode, like hot dogs. That's really cool. Um, uh, some other lasers, like a, a very high-powered nitrogen laser, um, and going to be explaining a bunch of things about plasma, uh, because it's cool stuff, it's everywhere. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Uh, the other thing is ancient languages. Um, you don't have to be a linguistic geek to be able to translate an ancient language. Most ancient languages are grammatically simple. Um, I can say with somewhat bit of, uh, a somewhat bit of confidence that uh, Chinese, Mandarin, Putonghua, as they call it in, in Chinese, is um, an ancient language. It's structured like an ancient language. Uh, semantics, it's, uh, you know, it's, its whole structure is, is still ancient. In fact, Chinese is borrowing words that can't really be explained in its ancient uh, pictographic form um, to use in modern language, because modern Chinese is, is really changing as a language. Uh, that's, you know, I just Chinese. I can, I can pretty much say I'm fluent in it. If you want to know how to say something in Chinese, just message me and I will respond as quickly as I can. Um, I'm busy. I, I live in China. I am uh, an English teacher, an oral English teacher. It's a really simple job if you can, you know, speak with a clear accent. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, uh, other ancient languages. We're going to be talking about Latin, ancient Egyptian, um, uh, a little bit about Hebrew because that's kind of um, in with the advanced technology, the, the ancient knowledge. We're going to talk about ancient knowledge also. Um, oh, okay, and the final thing, and this is probably what's going to get me into the most trouble immediately, uh, since I, I live in China. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the real China. Okay, on, on Chinese TV, you will see you see one version of China, blah, blah, blah. That's all communist propaganda shit. They want everybody to live in this, this nice, peaceful uh, society where everybody, you know, finds their, finds their lover. They, they, uh, they have a good job. They, you know, graduate from a decent university. They do good on their exams. Um, you know, they get a good job and they, they get a, they get a car, they get a, they buy a house and, uh, they grow old and they die. And, uh, the government likes that here because it's controllable. Yeah. Uh, the, the Communist Party is all about control and they generally don't care about the general populace because, I say, they, they say there's 1.3 billion of them. But here is the little secret that the Chinese government is not telling you. Um, there's only 1.3 billion, maybe 1.3, maybe 1.5 billion of the Chinese that are registered with the government. Out in the little city districts, um, there are some people, uh, they can't speak the, the main dialect of Chinese, Mandarin, um, which means they can't communicate with the rest of the Chinese world, they can't Obviously, they never learned English, so they can't communicate with uh, anybody outside of China. Just in their little, small, rinky-dink province, where everybody is a farmer, nobody really got much education past high school, if that. Um, 
but yeah, anyways, these these people, these extra point three to point five billion people, um, they don't have, and they will probably never have uh, a Chinese ID card, Chen uh, as they call it here. Um, which means they can never leave their province. They can um, um, they can't buy a house. They can't buy a car. They can't get a, a bank account. They can only um, stay at home. Their mother and father, their parents, their family have a have a business. They can work in their business. They're the family business. They have no options of um, other than that. Not really. Uh, you know, even to marry, you need your um, Chinese ID card. Uh, so it becomes a really big problem. Uh, but we're going to talk about things like that in this blog. Uh, I could talk for all day, probably, but I'll probably bore you. Um, I, I can complain about China a lot. I've been here for, let's see, at the back end of 2005, I came... Um, yeah, about yeah, January, January 2006, more or less. This is 2009, so this is beginning like my fourth year. Um, so I've seen a lot. I, I speak the language. Actually, I speak. Well, I can't say I speak two dialects. Um, I can I can understand the Chongqing and Sichuan dialect. dialect. Uh, but maybe if I have to say a sentence exactly like them, uh, I wouldn't really remember how to say it that way. I, I just really speak Mandarin. I love Chinese people said I have a southern Chinese accent, a Sichuan accent. Um, so, it's interesting like that. Uh, anyways, so that's going to be it. You know what I'm going to be talking about. So.